Well, here he is, bottom of the eighth inning with Blake Belliard, Martin, and the pitcher spot due. And boy, was Park hugely important in game one last night. Well, Bastardo gave up a leadoff double to Ethier. He came in, got a couple of ground balls, and the strikeout of Matt Kemp. And in these shadows, let off Casey Blake with a hammer for strike one. Blake is 0 for 7 in the series. One ball, one strike. The command is really impressive given the fact, as Craig Sager mentioned, he hadn't pitched a regular season game since September 16th. Velocity will come back, the break will come back, but the last thing to return is command, and it's been perfect in these first two outings we have seen him. Well, two really balls the, and a strike. Really the theme for the Philadelphia Phillies today. They had their starting pitcher Martinez, but only pitched once in the last 26 days. He was right on time. And Chan Ho Park is you guys mentioned he hasn't pitched since the 16th or Craig mentioned since the 16th and he's had his command also. Off the ground of Feliz and into left field. Blake is aboard leading off the Dodger eighth. First, to see if Belliard would tip his hand, he did. He squared around the bunt. But he's just wily enough to do that to put it in the Phillies' minds. A bunt was on, and Belliard spun out of the way but made contact. Strike one. Boa checker with Joe Torre, and then he'll go back. But this is not much of a bunt attempt. Boy, that's a very poor. Technical approach to a sacrifice bunt, the bat too close to his body. Get it out in front, put the ball on the ground, the game's on the line. <laughs> Chan Ho Park trying to take some of the spring out of the legs of Juan Pierre, who was 30 for 42 in steals during the regular season, if that's the way the Dodgers want to play. There's the bunt. Park can't get it. Howard can't get it. And everybody's safe. Where does Martin want the bunt to go? Third base. Nick Feliz handle it. Strikes. Perfect spot to throw the pitch. Chances are he'll pop this ball up if he attempts to bunt at it at all. You see many batters as they're bending to get out of the way. Bat stays in the strike zone. And you get a pop up. With all the problems the Phillies have had at the end of games this year, you didn't think it was going to be six up and six down, did you? <laughs> well, what did Charlie Manuel say after the game last night? Had him all the way. A much tougher spot now. His one nothing lead in jeopardy. Two on, nobody out in a 2 0 count. That, that was a strike. Well, your goal as a pitcher is you want to throw the ball up in the strike zone to try to get a pop up. But sometimes you take the opportunity to miss now with three pitches up. That's a strike. Martin thought it was down and in. It's a good pitch by Park. It's just the reaction from Martin that makes that pitch look worse than it was. Well, there's a little adrenaline flowing around the ballpark now. Everybody's into it. But you still got to have Russell Martin bunt right here.
Now it's a full count. Trying Three to get, balls, two strikes. Trying to get too fine. You don't have to bunt it right on the foul line. Now you're probably going to take the bunt up, but you always run into the possibility of a double play. And we talked about it before. Usually when you're up here to bunt, you want to bunt this ball to Feliz, make him field it. He was bunting that ball towards Howard. 14 errors this season, six of them coming by the throw. From 3 and 0 to 3 and 2, and now Ruiz will make Russell Martin wait a few more moments. All right, manager, does he run again? No. He's swinging the bat, right? I think you've got to let him swing the bat. Agreed. He only has two sacrifice punts all year. He's not really comfortable with that, and he hadn't looked very good when he squared around. You've got to let him swing the bat, even though you run the risk of a double play. Three balls, two strikes. The batter and the pitcher trying to wait each other out. And another former Dodger, Chan Ho Park, on the mound for the Phillies today. Ground ball toward third. Feliz has it. Second base, one. First base. Throw it away. Pierre's going to cut it. So Scott Ayer is on in relief for the Phillies. Ayer is pitching hurt. He's got an elbow problem that's going to need some attention when the season is over. And he turned his ankle in that series with the Rockies. And now faces Jim Tomey with a man aboard. And one out here in the eighth. If there is a break for the Phillies on that just completed play where Utley threw the ball away it the ball didn't bounce in the Phillies dugout and the ricochet came right back to Ryan Howard which forced Russell Martin to stay at first base so rather than being in scoring position the double play is still in order with Tommy in the batter's box well we saw both starting pitchers going against their former teams and we thought that might be the big story maybe the big story is this big First baseman Jim Tomey going against his former mates in the Philadelphia Phillies. He knows Scott Ayer. Unfortunately, he's 0 for 7. He knows that Ayer has owned him. That's in the right field, a base hit. Martin got a good jump around second. On his way to third, a pinch hit for Jim Tomey. So the third pitcher of the inning is Ryan Madsen now. Top of the Dodger order is up. First and third, one out. And for all the good work that Philadelphia's bullpen did in last night's ball game, their defense in this frame has let them down. We'll see if Madsen can pitch out of a gigantic mess here in game two. Well, we're talking about a Dodger team that won their first 13 at home, 17 of their first 20. There's some magic here that happens late in games, and sometimes it's not even of their own design. And the National League Division Series, of course, the big error by Holiday in the ninth inning, and here, Hudley throwing away the double play ball in the eighth helping the Dodgers with some late magic. If you play the game the right way, it comes back to reward you. Bell Belliard running the ball past Chan Ho Park has opened up this inning for the Dodgers. So now Madsen versus for call. Remember you have a catcher at third base if it's a fly ball to the outfield. And Madsen has had very good success against the Dodgers shortstop who's 0 for 3 in this game 1 for 7 so far in this series tough man to double up hitting from the left side and they're going to draw the infield in Sam Perlazzo giving the infield defense going to cut off the run at the plate even with one out Rafael Fercal flew out to the outfield twice against Pedro Martinez. Certainly would take one here. 
Madsen throws that changeup and bounces it in the dirt. But Brewery is just terrific at blocking balls in the dirt. Foul passed first. One ball, one strike. <laughs> up in the dirt and a good stop. Three balls and a strike. Fisted right side. Howard on the run. Cannot get there. Strike one. Matt Kemp, 313 with three grand slams this season. April 19th versus Colorado, Matt Boyle. May 7th in Washington, Jordan Zimmerman here at home. And then July 10th, Carlos Villanueva at Milwaukee. Three grand slams. So he's been in this spot and delivered. and a strike. Driven down the right field line. Worth on the run in the corner. And it's a foul ball. What you want to do in this situation with the bases loaded, stay in a big part of the field, try to drive it deep, at least at a minimum, get a sack fly. One of those right there that Worth might have been able to catch, but you can't catch it in this situation. You have to let it fall in. Foul. Heady play there by Jason Worth. Kemp has been great all season long. He talked about those three grand slams. He led the National League this year with 47 RBIs during regular season, seventh inning or later. But now down two strikes with the bases loaded, one out. He's the key man in the inning. Change up. Big pitch from Ryan Madsen. Two men are out. So Ethier versus Happ. Well, Happ had an outstanding season, both in the bullpen, but mainly as a starter. 12 wins this season. He had three complete games, a couple of shutouts as a starter, but started in the bullpen, so this is not foreign, although two outs, bases loaded. Bottom of the eighth, Dodger Stadium. It's a little foreign to most people. So lefty, lefty. Here in the eighth, you mentioned Ethier has trouble with the changeup. That was a point you made earlier in the ball game, Ronnie. Let's see if he can time Jay Happ.
One ball, no strikes. I think the problem, Chip, though, is that even though Hap has a great changeup, when you go into the bullpen as a starter, sometimes you come out of the bullpen, you only bring two pitches, your fastball and your slider. Martin, Castro, for call the runners for Los Angeles. Didn't mean to, and the count now even a ball and a strike. Eighth year had three hits in the game last night. Two of those came against left-handers. Kershaw got a base hit, and Antonio Bastardo leading off the seventh. He had a bullet double down the right field line. A very long defensive inning for the Phillies on a hot day. A lot of pawing around on that Philly infield. It's one and two. Manny Ramirez waits next. The Phillies will have the top of their batting order coming up in the ninth inning. Got to stay back with two strikes, just try to protect the strike zone, and he's fighting off that fastball. Dodger Stadium roaring a moment ago. Now with two strikes, it's awfully tense. Well, this inning has taken so long that now the shadows have worked themselves all the way through the pitching mound. It's got to help you through your bit. Yeah, as long as the pitcher and batter are both in the same light. You have a better chance, but when that pitcher is standing in bright sunshine and you're in the shadows, tough to pick up the baseball. Eighth years worked the count to two and two. And now the merry-go-round, full count. With two out. him up on the first pitch. Pedro Feliz camps out and he makes the play and that retires the side. The Dodgers score two in the last of the eighth. Top of the order for Philadelphia coming up for the ninth inning here in game two.